Hilo Town. Thank you for what a wonderful, incredible Hilo welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost bedtime, isn't it? I certainly won't take it personally if you start yawning. Oh, uh, sorry, I should have hung. Oh, I don't want to mess with it and drop it. Okay, is that good? Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. <clears throat> it's about, uh, what did I already say? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I know where I'm at. I was just thinking yesterday that I'm not feeling nervous about getting up on this comedy show. And that made me nervous. <laughs> It's really great to be here at Cuckoo Owl Studios. Let's hear it for Cuckoo Owl. Yeah. I met Bob two summers ago at Honolulu Airport. Where's Bob? Okay, good. I just want to make sure you're here. <laughs> hey, when it sounds like I'm saying, like it was like, oh, hello, nice to meet you. Oh, yes, lovely, nice to meet you too. Oh, uh, no. He was sitting at the furthest back table at Stinger Ray's. He had a little music studio set up. He wasn't looking around, he had headphones on. Intently focused on his computer, creating. And then I saw it. As if the clouds parted, the, whole, the, the heavens opened with a stream of light right onto his guitar perched on a chair like a person. <laughs> I was just returning from visiting uh, my sons in Seattle. Okay, I need it. <laughs> I didn't even print to this finger. <laughs> I was returning from uh, visiting my sons in Seattle. One of them uh, plays guitar. So uh, my empty nest was just firing off. I just had to find out if Bob had ever seen my son play Zappa solos at the UH Hilo Orchestra. <laughs> I busted in on his concentration with the dorkiest comment possible. You're a musician. <laughs> he was such a good sport and invited me to the Monday Night Jazz Jam, which is awesome, right? <laughs> if you haven't been, you have to go. Uh, I, and so then I wrote a limerick just to keep up my dorky theme. Want me to share it? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, with that kind of response, how could I not? Sorry, Bob, but this is a comedy show. <laughs> good thing you're such a good sport. <laughs> there is a curator named Bub, whose Cuckoo Owl studio is Hub. <laughs> For music, poets, and arts, creative refuge for hearts, that magician of music, Bub. Big hand for Bub. Thanks, Bub. Holding the, holding the light for authentic creativity. Yep. Oh, here's a couple of impressions to help you stay alive. <laughs> That's the walk, don't walk guy. <laughs> That's the hurry up hand. That's the run hand. Solid. <laughs> if you want to keep love alive, I've got one for you. 
this is what you're doing. <laughs> this is what you should do. <laughs> but can we do that? No. <laughs> Just stop? <laughs> we won't stop until we've had the last word. Even if it's just a <laughs> or a rolling of the eyes with a touch of the tongue and a sigh. <sighs> Doesn't start out that way though. No. At first it's all cooing love sounds. It's all mm. <laughs> at some point those exact love gestures change their meaning. Winning at arguments becomes way more important than winning at love. <laughs> so I've invented a device to help you win. Turn that passion for blame into a flame. <laughs> Effective blaming is an art form. <laughs> With any art, you need the right tools. And to assist you in what you already do, I offer The blame thrower. <laughs> blame thrower. <laughs> I have three models to choose from. A catapult blame thrower is a ballistic device used to launch a projectile a great distance without the aid of explosive devices. <laughs> Wikipedia. It comes with a gunny sack attachment <laughs> in which you collect all your anger until it turns into a large ball of rage. <laughs> then place it in the bucket for one big toss, aim it, and launch. Just let it go. This is the one to use with a boss, a spouse, or other dominant overlord in your world. <laughs> when you're ready to end things, like your marriage, your job, your adult children still living at home, <laughs> meddling parents, the catapult has proven to be one of the most effective mechanisms during warfare, and let's face it, love is war. <laughs> Number two, the deluxe flamethrower is for those who rev up from zero to 100 with the flip of a switch. <laughs> this device looks like a machine gun or a bazooka. And I have right here a picture of a sexy model demonstrating its use. <laughs> Any resemblance to Poppy is purely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't give it away. <laughs> it hooks up directly to your rage tank and shoots a steady flow, kind of like Pele, hitting everyone and everything in its path. It's the simplest to use, just point and shoot. <laughs> She got everybody. Did I get everybody? Yeah. It covers a lot of area and can turn everything into lava. Watch out. People might lose their homes and properties in the wake of this baby. <laughs> Finally, the pea shooter. It's good for the preemptive sneak attack. Great for passive aggressiveness. <laughs> Also useful in small arguments when you just want to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. <laughs> <laughs> Plan ahead for when your loved ones discover and get their own blame thrower. You'll be ready for any conflict. <laughs> when you purchase the Defense Against Blame Shield. <laughs> There are many shapes and sizes. For ease of use during tongue-tied moments, it comes complete with quick, witty answers engraved right inside, right near the handle. At the first sign of a blame thrower, you just hold it up for protection. <laughs> Choose from the deny or lie, the blame back, the admit it and cry, the make excuses, or the philosophizes.
<laughs> I'll be sending around a purchase order. Just give me your credit card info and the details of your firstborn child. I want that one because it might be the only child born out of pure love. Like I was. I was born nine months and five days after my parents' wedding night. That's right. I gave them absolutely no time together alone. They were on their honeymoon, though, so I know they were still in love. They were a couple of gypsies living the military dream. So I had to be portable. They didn't need a crib. The dresser drawer was plenty good. People are always trying to guess my age. <laughs> my whole life I've looked too young. Except now. <laughs> I looked so young when I hit the double digits that people thought I was two years old. <laughs> I'd open my mouth and talk, and they thought I was a ventriloquist puppet. They were all like, where's that voice coming from? Where's the puppet master? I looked so young that when I was almost 30, Pizza Hut asked if I was 12 or 13, because there was a price difference between those two. I was annoyed. I wanted to be a woman, but I was still buying my clothes in the children's department of the Sears catalog. When I was almost 40, now here I'm going to brag. Oh, I looked so young, I was heavily pursued by an 18-year-old Australian boy. Hushy. <laughs> Which was a little disturbing since my kids' ages added up to that. He said some words I'd never heard. Don't try to tan. I like your smooth skin. My Australian accent always turns into a southern drawl. We Aussies like fair skin because it's so rare and exotic. I thought, no way, nobody likes white skin. Are you me? As a kid traveling around in the military, I didn't even know I was supposed to care about skin color until we moved into a valley of northern locals in Canada. <laughs> Mainly Scottish and Scandinavian, blah, Scandinavian, blah, Scandinavian imports, Ooh, tongue twister, who were obsessed with tanning. Beautiful brown faces and blonde hair. Oh, you got a little color this weekend. Must have been out in the sun. <laughs> oh, yes, I was at the beach. And here's me with my red, peeling sunburn. I thought everybody had to work to get a tan, and that I just didn't know the recipe. I never dreamed that some people were actually born with gorgeous skin color. I thought people's skin color was a direct result of how much sun they got. And if they moved to where I lived, they'd never be able to keep up their tan. The people I know here are part English, part Scottish, part Swedish, part Russian, part Chinese, part Japanese, part Filipino, part German, part Portuguese, etc., etc., etc. How much of a tan do you have to have to switch from being a Howley to Hawaiian? I was told that aloha means spread the love. I was greeted with aloha on Hawaiian Airlines. But after that, no one said that <laughs> word to me again. <laughs> but I keep saying it just in case it comes back in style someday. I'll be ready. I'll be practiced. Before I moved to friendly Hawaii, I had images of palm trees, endless sand, soft sandy beaches, smiling surfers, smiling women with flowers in their hair. The palms are so hazardous they need coconut haircuts. <laughs> the beaches are rock or coarse black sand. The surfers are fierce. <laughs> and you can't just run around picking flowers in other people's yards to put in your hair. <laughs> Whenever I feel nervous that I might be a racist, I think, no, I'm more of a buggist. I discriminate mercilessly against cockroaches, centipedes, and slugs. 
the bugs keep wishing I'd become a Buddhist, but no, I'm, I'm definitely a biased. Besides racism, we should be worrying about the proper PC of how people identify themselves, shouldn't we? My friend Jeff identifies as a woman trapped in a gay man's body. I don't know who he likes. <laughs> My friend Greg identifies as a man who was trapped inside a woman's body until he got born. <laughs> He's been trying to get back inside a woman's body ever since. His joke. But none of this is going to matter soon enough. The monitor minimum is coming. It's bringing us an ice age. It's all going to wipe us all out. So I don't need to declutter my house. <laughs> okay, I've been studying Chinese, aren't you so impressed? Specifically Mandarin. Translation, I've been watching soap operas with subtitles. That's my idea of learning. In order to avoid blame for being lazy, I learned a few words and phrases. In honor of Valentine's Day and this show, I put a few phrases together into a little song I call Rubo Suni. I'm going to need your help. Oh, look at me messing up the planet. That's okay, Modern Video is going to fix it all. Okay, I need a good little rap.
flamethrowers after the show. And you can definitely have my first one. <laughs>